hard to say. I think the team is so good. Uh, I think they made the right uh, the right choice when selected the players. They brought the right players, and Jurgen Klopp, you know, uh, he worked. He, he brought most of you know every single players to uh, another level. I would say, uh, if I take uh, Salah as an example, when he arrived from uh, from Roma. Uh, we were not sure uh, he wasn't that good at Chelsea. So a lot of people were saying, is it good enough for the Premier League? And you've seen, you know, Osala perform for Liverpool. So uh, so I think in, uh, in that current team, uh, they have at least five, six uh, world-class players. Uh, you, uh, you take Salah, you take Mane, uh, Firmino, you know, uh, you take in the in the, in the midfield. Wijnaldum is a very good player. Anderson, Kaita is coming. Is coming well, as, you know. And uh, and the back four you now is strong. Obviously, Van Dijk has made a massive, massive difference. Is uh, the best defender in the world, best centre back in the world, and he made uh, since he arrived a big, big difference. So, uh, who is my favourite player? You know, as a, as a former uh, centre back, I would uh, I would say Van Dijk. The VAR Show. The one place for your weekly football update. Hola, very warm welcome to the VAR Show. The show which talks about all the various major football leagues in detail. Today we are going to continue the theme of interviews. And we have former Liverpool defender Mr. Stephen on show with us. So, without wasting much time, I would like to first thank Stephen for coming on the show. Thank you and welcome to our show. And I would like to begin by asking you, how are you and what are you doing these days? Uh, yeah, I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing okay. So obviously, it's been a difficult time uh, since February here uh, in Europe, in Switzerland, where I live. Uh, everything has stopped. Uh, I mean, you know, schools and uh, people couldn't go to work anymore. So it was a difficult time and it was the same for sport and football. So uh, now it's slowly, slowly back to normal. Uh, you know, kids are back to school and uh, we can go back to work. Football has started again last weekend. So uh, we resume the, the season here in, uh, in Switzerland. So uh, it's getting uh, slowly better. Definitely. And now we'll move on to a, maybe a lighter topic that is football in comparison to what's happening all, all around the world. So now I'll talk about your time at Liverpool. You were part of the very rampant team, you know, which won five trophies under Jared Hullier. How was it playing in that team? Obviously, it was uh, the best part of my career. Uh, you know, nearly played six years for Liverpool, which, as you know, is uh, is one of the biggest clubs in the world. So, uh, so it was a privilege to play for that club. And obviously, winning five trophies in one season, 2001, under Gerard Boulier, uh, it's really been a great, great experience. So, uh, really enjoy my my time. And uh, yeah, if I could uh, go back, I would love it. So, you know, like uh, you all won pretty much everything, but you know, like one trophy that eluded your team was the Premier League. You all came out, I think, third in 2000, 2001 and second in the following year. Did it feel bad not winning the league? Uh, yeah, I think it's the only trophy uh, I missed, you know, with, with Liverpool. It's the league. And, uh, you know, the Premier League is so big and uh, Liverpool has not money nearly now because it's 30 years, but they will, they will win it in a, in a few days, hopefully. Uh, I remember we finished second, I think it was the season 2001-2002, just behind Arsenal. So we had, we had a very good season, but Arsenal was even better than us on that, uh, on that uh, season. So uh, it's a shame because I think we had the team to win it. We were very close to win it, but we couldn't achieve this, uh, this target. 
so you know like you spoke about arsenal and arsenal during that time they had the likes of onri burkamp in their team how was it you know facing such a fearsome strike force Yeah, Arsenal was definitely uh, the strongest team back uh, that time, you know. And uh, as you said, uh, Jeremy Henry was playing uh, up front. He was the toughest opponent to play against, uh, to be honest. Uh, you know, because not was the only quick, but he could, you know, strike from 30 yards. He had a good, uh, he was a good header of the ball. Uh, he was an intelligent player, clever player, so uh, difficult, very difficult to play against. He had Berkham with him, who was giving him the, the assist, also a top, top, top player. And I remember, you know, Robert Pires playing on the, on the left, Freddy Lumber playing on the right, making the right runs. And in the middle, they had uh, Emmanuel Petit, Patrick Vieira. So uh, the back four with Tony Adams, uh, David Seaman, uh, Ashley Cole. Now they were they, they they were very very strong. So you know, like uh, as you said that Liverpool are going to win the league in a few days, if not weeks. How how is the Liverpool team, current Liverpool team, in your opinion? How much of a job has Jurgen Klopp done? Oh, he's done a tremendous job. Uh, I think since he arrived back uh, now five years ago, uh, right from the first day, I think you could feel uh, it was a good match between uh, the Liverpool Liverpool supporters and Jurgen Klopp. Uh, it was, uh, it was, I would say, love from the first minute. And uh, since he arrived, he improved the team every season. Uh, you could really feel that the team is going in the right direction under under Jurgen. So uh, so I think now it's um, it, it's well deserved that Liverpool title because they've been the, the better best team uh, during the season, no doubt about that. Uh, last season they won the Champions League. They nearly won the, won the league as well, only because of Man City was even better. But uh, I just hope that uh, that no, they can even get higher than that. So I mean, uh, okay, they will win the title. I hope they can build on that and uh, and start winning title maybe next year again in a few few next years. You know, they can win more titles. Definitely, I hope all the Liverpool fans will want that too. Who is your favorite player in this current team? Oh, uh, hard to say. I think the team is so good. Uh, I think they made the right, uh, the right choice when selected the players. They brought the right players, and Jurgen Klopp, you know, uh, he worked. He, he brought most of, you know, every single players to uh, another level. I would say, uh, if I take uh, Salah as an example, when he arrived from uh, from Roma. Uh, we were not sure. Uh, he wasn't that good at Chelsea, so a lot of people were saying, "Is it good enough for the Premier League?" And you've seen, you know, Osala perform for Liverpool. So, uh, so I think in uh, in that current team, uh, they have at least five, six uh, world class players. Uh, you take uh, you take Salah, you take Mane, uh, Firmino, you know. Uh, You take in the in the, in the midfield. Wijnaldum is a very good player. Anderson, Kaita is coming. Is coming well, as, you know. And uh, and the back four you now is strong. Obviously, Van Dijk has made a massive, massive difference. Uh, he's the best defender in the world, best centre back in the world, and he made uh, since he arrived a big, big difference. So, uh, who is my favourite player? You know, as a, as a former uh, centre back, I would uh, I would say Van Dijk. Okay, that's a very uh, good choice. And uh, you know, like uh, we have another Swiss player in Liverpool right now, Shakiri. What do you think of him? Do you think he has to leave because he's not getting game time? Uh, for him, it's a difficult uh, situation. You know, when when you're not playing and you are already 28 years old, uh, you need <clears throat> you need to play more. Uh, I think. Uh, It will be difficult for him to get in this team. Uh, like I said, you have world-class player. Uh, he's been injured a lot since he arrived, 
So he never had really the opportunity, I think, to show how good he can be. Because when he played one, two games, three games, and then he got injured, he was out for a month, two, three months. He's injured again at the moment. So, uh, so it's maybe, you know, the right time for him to think about a move uh, to a club where he, could, uh, where he could play a lot more. Definitely. And uh, now I'll ask you a little bit more tricky question. You know, whom would you have in your defence? Sammy Hippia or Virgil van Dijk? <laughs> tricky question. Uh, Obviously, I know Sami so well because we played together for a long, long time. I know how good, uh, how good, he, how good he was. So uh, I love, you know, playing with him. Uh, I never played with Van Dijk. I wish I could have played with him. Uh, you know, but uh, I would say Sami because I played with him, and uh, I choose Sami. So you know, like uh, from there, I'll move on to your another club that was Celtic, you, you went after Liverpool and you know like Celtic fans are said to be very passionate like the Liverpool ones but for you, if you had to choose one, which atmosphere was better, Anfield or Celtic Park? I still say uh, Anfield, uh, but Celtic is great, Celtic is great as well. Uh, I think you've got the two best atmosphere in the world for me. When you when you take uh, Anfield and Celtic, uh, the only shame is Celtic. You know, uh, they play in the Scottish League, and uh, maybe one day will come. I don't know. They will play in the Premier League. You know, because uh, I would love to see Celtic compete in the Premier League uh, with which with the fan base they've got. Uh, it's a massive, massive club, and. Uh, and I love my time there as well. So, you know, like uh, on a personal level, are you superstitious? Like, did you have any ritual you used to do before the games? I think every player, uh, they have got uh, rituals, you know. Uh, it all comes down to confidence. Uh, when you play, when you play football, confidence is so big. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, if you are full of confidence, you will try things, you will feel well, and you will uh, you will play well. Uh, the opposite, if you have no confidence, it's very difficult to perform. So I think the rituals you have, that's only to build your confidence. Because you think, I've done that uh, last Saturday, I played well, I will keep going uh, with this type of rituals. So for me, yeah, I had a few, you know, you always do the same thing exactly at the same time before the game. Uh, you get in the bus in the same order, get out of the bus, same order, stuff like that, you know. Uh, you put the right shoes before the left shoes. Uh, when you go to the warm-up, you do exactly the same routine, you do the same exercise in the same order. So that's what I used to do uh, all the time, just to, to build up my confidence. So, you know, like, uh, talking of your playing career, uh, like, did you have uh, any particular opponent you did not like facing other than Henri? Quite a few, to be honest. When you play in the Premier League, every weekend, <coughs> you play against a very tough opponent. Uh, I remember playing against Duncan Ferguson when he was, you know, playing for, for Everton. Uh, not the same type of striker than Thierry Henry, obviously, but very, very tough physically. You know, strong, very strong in the air. So, uh, for example, difficult to play against. Uh, I remember when we played against United, uh, Andy Cole, Dwight York, uh, same thing. All together, very good partnership, very, very difficult to play against. Alan Shearer at Newcastle, top player, strong physically. You know, very, very good striker. Uh, yeah, so like I said, a lot of tough uh, players to play against. So, you know, another tricky question for you. Like, you all won five trophies in the year 2000-2001. Which one was your favourite? <clears throat> if I have to pick one, I will I will uh, say the, the FA, Cup, uh, FA Cup against Arsenal. Uh, why? 
because uh, when I grew up in Switzerland, the FA Cup was the only game once a year we could watch uh, live on TV. You know, uh, back at the time, it wasn't like it is now. Uh, you couldn't watch any Premier League, nothing at all. So once a year in May, we had the FA Cup final and I could watch it. And I grew up watching this, uh, this game. Uh, for me, like it was, uh, you know, something incredible. It was like nearly like a mythos, you know. So uh, when I had the opportunity to play myself in the final and to win this trophy, uh, it was like, a, a, you know, a kid's dream come true. So that's why I will pick, uh, I will pick this one. So, you know, like moving from your playing career to, to your coaching career, you went into coaching, you coached quite a few teams and FC Sion was your last uh, team you coached in 2019. And uh, did you always want to get into coaching? <clears throat> coaching, that's always something I enjoyed. I remember when I was uh, starting playing professional here uh, in Switzerland. Uh, I used to coach, I was, I was 18, I used to coach on the Wednesday afternoon already the little, little kids, you know, four years old, five years old kids, the one who really start with football. And, um, and I did it because I, uh, I enjoyed it. So it was always something uh, I wanted to do when, uh, when I finished my, my career. So I had the opportunity to start uh, at my last club, Blackburn Rovers. Uh, I had quite a lot of uh, free time because the last season I played there I was injured. I had the Achilles tendon problem operation. So then um, I was doing my rehab. I did a lot of spare time in the afternoon. So that's when I started to do my coaching match. And I started coaching uh, the under 18 at the Blackburn Academy. And yeah, that's how, that's how it started really. So yeah, I enjoy, uh, I enjoy coaching. So, you know, like as a coach, what is your footballing philosophy like? How do you see football? Uh, I think as a coach, you can have a philosophy. You should have one, but it's not that easy as that. I would say, I would explain myself. <laughs> Sometimes you have a philosophy, you would like to play, uh, you know, uh, pressing, uh, very with a lot of verticality and stuff like that. That might be your you, you philosophy or possession game. I don't know. The problem is when you get to a club, you cannot pick 25 players. You get to a club, you can be lucky, feel yourself lucky if you can choose five players out of the 25. So that means that maybe you don't have the, the team, you don't have the players to play what you would like to play, uh, you know. If you want to play possession game, obviously you need very technical players, uh, clever players. Uh, sometimes you don't have them. Sometimes you only have quick players, strong physically, quick, technically maybe not so gifted. So uh, uh, you have to adapt. That's the only. That's the only way uh, you can be a winning coach or manager. For me, it's uh, it's to adapt, and uh, and sometimes your philosophy you cannot really do what you would like to do. So you know, uh, you've had a successful playing career, and you know, like what is the most difficult part of being a manager? Manager, to be honest, it's uh, it's very difficult. Uh, the best part in football is being a player. Definitely, <laughs> being a player is the job, is the is the dream job. Uh, at the end of the day, you are paid uh, to play football, which is at first a passion, a hobby, and um, and I would say that you only have to look after yourself. That's it. The whole week you prepare yourself for the Saturday's game, and um, and that's it really. Uh, very different when you are a manager. <laughs> you have 25 players first that you have to look after. So every day, one or two players, they will have problems. They won't be happy. You have to solve these problems. Uh, you have a staff. Same thing. Maybe you have six, seven, eight people of staff, sometimes more. You have to make sure they get on together well and stuff like that. And then obviously you have the board. 
you have to keep them happy. So, uh, so it's a lot of people to, to think about and to make sure that they are happy, they are in the right frame of, of mind to, to perform and, and win the game for you on the set. So, you know, like a lot of your former teammates have gone into management, but one person, for at least I think in terms of Liverpool players, will be Steven Gerrard. He's managing at Rangers. Yep. How was he when you played with him? He was very young in Liverpool, in age wise. Did you think that he'll go on to become a manager? Yeah, I think uh, Stevie in the in the team in the squad, the dressing room, he was uh, he was uh, he was quiet. I would say uh, he was doing really the talking on the pitch. On the pitch, he was the best player uh, I played. Uh, I played with, you know. But like you said, he was still uh, quite young uh, when I played between 99 and 2005. So, uh, but you know, you, you could see that he was a very uh, clever player, very intelligent player. It, it was one of these players who could play everywhere on the pitch. And I think during my time, he must have played at six or seven different positions. He played, on, he played right back. He played every position in, 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 the, in the middle, you know, left, right, centre mid, uh, behind the striker. Uh, he could have played centre backs, no problem. So it's one of these players who are very clear, clever, who understand the game uh, very well. And, uh, and he was, you know, like I said, quite, let's say, quiet, but very focused. So uh, that's the type of players you know that they will become manager. And they will so, you know, like the next question again, it might be very difficult for you because you've had an illustrious career, okay? If you had to choose one moment from your career, which is the best out of the lot? Which one would that be? Hmm. Well, it's, choosing one, it's difficult because uh, maybe, I maybe had, I don't know, 17, 18 years career and you have quite uh, a few highlights, I would say. Uh, I picked one before with the FA Cup final. Um, one I would pick it was on the with with uh, with Switzerland. It was Euro '96. Uh, we played the opening game against England. Uh, the tournament was in England. We played at Wembley, so obviously it was a big, big game, big day, and uh, we drew one-one. So you know, for us. Uh, as a small football nation, it was a, it was a great result. It was a great atmosphere at Wembley. So, yeah, that's uh, that's another highlight I would uh, I would pick. And um, if I would have to pick one more, I would maybe pick the the semi final of the UEFA Cup against Barcelona. Uh, why? Because the first leg we drew. Uh, nil nil at the, the new camp. The return leg, we knew it would be difficult. Uh, we scored quite early in the game. Uh, Gary Mack on a, on a penalty. So we were winning 1 nil. But then we had to, let's say, to sustain the, 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 the pressure of the Barcelona team for 75 minutes or something like that. And we managed to keep the clean sheet. So I remember the feeling uh, when the referee reset the end of the game. Uh, what a great feeling it was. So like you said, you had, to, uh, you had to be under pressure and you had one guy who was very vocal or, or is said to be very vocal in the team, Jamie Carragher. How was it playing yeah. with him? Jamie is a very, very, uh, you know, great character because he's always, always want to win. Uh, he's got that in, in him. Uh, so that's why, you know, he, he's vocal. Uh, he's very clever tactically. So uh, when you have him in the back four, uh, he's one of these guys who is, uh, who is a leader who can command the back four. You know, some, some players sometimes, they are good players, but they are not able to do that because tactically, they don't really feel sometimes uh, the game, so they can't. And as a character, they don't want to because it's difficult, you know, play your game and be a leader. It's two things you have to do at the same time. 
So not every player can do it. So Jamie is one of them. Uh, he was a true leader on the pitch, wanted to win every single game, even uh, in a training session, and being able uh, to see things before it happens and be a leader. So, you know, like uh, again, talking of your time at Liverpool, you had quite a success with the team under Gerard Hullier. If that team had to play the current team, who would win? Uh, the current team is a world class team. Uh, at the time, we were a good team. Like I said before, we could have won the league, but we didn't. Uh, Arsenal was probably uh, still a bit better. Uh, at the moment, they are they are one of the best teams in the world. So, uh, so I have to say that probably the current team would beat my uh, former team. Of course, Sander uh, had a different thing. He thought your team would win. When I spoke to him, Sander Westerville, he was like, "No, our team would win." From thing, just one nil. So you know, like uh, moving on from that. Uh, you know, you've had such an illustrious career, okay, and uh, in terms of playing and also in coaching, you're very young in coaching. If you had to give any advice to young players, what would that be? The advice for me, it's always uh, to play football with passion. <coughs> I think uh, when I grew up, we played football just because we loved it. And that's it. We loved the game. And there were nothing really behind, uh, you know, being a professional and stuff like that. Then it happens, obviously, and it was great. Like I said, it's the, the best job in the world, being a, a professional footballer. Uh, these days, the problem I have with the, with the kids, uh, they are a bit twist sometimes because of what they what they see every day on the on the on the in the press or on Instagram and the social media uh, explain myself you know uh, they see what comes with being a professional footballer so big money nice lifestyle big cars uh, restaurant holidays and stuff like that you know and some kids they said oh that's great I want to be a professional footballer but do they really love the game? I'm not sure sometimes. Sometimes they want what goes with being a professional footballer, but they don't really have the, the, the passion uh, to be one of them, you know? Uh, don't forget that it's very difficult to, uh, to be a, a top professional footballer uh, in a top club. And to do that, you need to work hard. You need to improve your game every day. But to do that, you need passion because that's what you want to do. And you go to train once, twice a day, every day because you love it. And that would be my advice. If you, if you don't have this passion, I don't think uh, it's a job for you because I don't think you'll be able to reach this target. Definitely. And, uh, you know, on that note, I'll ask you one final question. And this is the most difficult. It would even be more difficult than your Barcelona time, you know, the second leg. Whom would you prefer in your team? Tomorrow, suppose you are coaching a team and whom would you prefer, Messi or Ronaldo, in your team? <laughs> I have to think about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the two best players for the last decade. No doubt about that. Slightly different players, obviously. So, uh, not the same type of players. Uh, I don't know really, but yeah, I have to pick one. So um, I, I'll pick Ronaldo. I would pick uh, Ronaldo. Um, why? Um, because I, I must say, I like uh, I like the way he, the way he is in, in terms of his working rate. Uh, I never played with him, but I know that uh, he's one of these guys who, who work a lot. Uh, he's, the, he's, he's the best in the world or one of the two best in the world, not only because he is gifted and he's got talent, but because for the last 20 years uh, he, works, uh, he works so much. 
So that's why, you know, I would, I would pick him and have him in my team just because of that. Uh, we know that Messi is so good and so talented. But if I have to make a choice, I will go for Ronaldo. So, you know, on that note, Stephen, thank you so much for talking to me. And I wish you all the best with your managerial career. And I hope as a Liverpool fan, you get to see much more, you know, victories for Liverpool winning the league. And maybe even after that, as you said, thank you for joining me. And I wish you all the best. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Okay. A pleasure. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.